I was planning on making a video about these very popular mechanics work lights and it's kind of skipped ahead because today I met up with a friend called Andy Karush and he said, I've got one of these and it's faulty. Do you want to take a look? And yes, I did, because that's all you need to do to get me to open something is actually give me faulty stuff. So I'm afraid I fixed it and I didn't change any components. I just fixed it because it's got a very interesting fault and very interesting circuitry as well. So this is one I bought off eBay. And there's a bit of a story to that because a long time ago, someone sent me this. It's an Astro Pneumatics one, which is quite a high profile one. And I didn't realize what it was at the time. And it, because some other stuff came in the box, it ended up getting put in a pile of stuff. And then I'm watching the mechanics shows on YouTube, uh, including South Main Auto. And he uses one of these all the time under the bonnet because they just, they've got a powerful magnet at the end. It's adjustable and it's got a really good grip. It's variable intensity and there's no pulse of modulation. Um, you'll see a slight, uh, strobing just on the camera, but that is the camera. Trust me when I say there is no modulation or, or flickering f f despite the intensity setting you set it at. Very useful. Uh, and the fact they can be just char recharged from USB is just fantastic. Um, the I saw those ones on South Main Auto and I thought, oh, quite fancy one of those. And I went on eBay and bought one of these. It was only about a tenner. And I'm raking through some other stuff, waiting for this one to arrive, and I find this, and I think, oh, crikey, it's one of these Astro Pneumatics ones. And to compare the two of them, I'm not sure what the price difference is. I'm not sure if Astro have just maybe had this one customised and rebranded a bit. It's got a few extra features. It's got a felt pad in the bottom to protect metalwork from the magnet. But the most important thing is that compared to the cheapy ones, the Astro Pneumatics ones, if I turn this up, the astronomatic ones put out notably more light and a richer colour temperature of light. It, it's, uh, it has a broader spectrum, so it's actually a lot nicer to work with. This one looks a bit sort of grey, if you will. Uh, they both get very similar capacity batteries, but they last a good length of time, particularly because you can turn it down. It's also worth mentioning that the uh, cob, the chip on board array in here, uh, has much bigger chips than the cheapy Chinese ones. I guess these are all ultimately Chinese, but these ones are definitely cheaper. And perhaps uh, I think Real Mechanics would justifiably choose the Astro Pneumatics. It's just that little bit better. But anyway, I digress. Let's put this out the way, where I'm not going to damage it and where the magnet's not going to destroy stuff. And tonight's uh, confection of choice is Werner's Marked Mang Magenbrot sent by Victor from um, Switzerland and he, he sent some stuff a while back I've not actually been, I was going to share it with the Manx Beard Club guys unfortunately we've not made that many videos recently so uh, it's just been sitting here for a while so before it goes out of date I'm going to eat some of it uh, this is a sort of gingerbread but heavily soaked in glaze it's very nice it's a bit Moorish if you know what I mean so uh, thanks for that Victor I'll be featuring some of your other stuff as well but anyway, back to the main thing in question here. So this light was just completely dead. And you turned out, it was, seemed to be taking a charge okay, but it just wasn't lighting. And uh, I've opened it up and I've, I've taken a picture of the circuit board so you can see it. That's probably the best bet, isn't it? Notice this aluminium channel for heat sinking, but the LED strip isn't actually stuck into it in any way. That's a bit strange. It does only dissipate about 3 watts though. Let's take a look at the circuitry. Here we go. Uh, I'll just zoom down on this to get it a bit sharper. So noting that, uh, if I flip this, yes I did flip this. So here's the circuit board and it's really simple. It's got the chip here. I thought, Maybe it's doing this control of the intensity. No, it's all linear. It's all analog, the control of the, the uh, intensity. This is a standard um, TP4056 type chip. It's the standard charge regulator, just driving its two LEDs, the little current programming uh, resistor, and then just some decoupling capacitors. Uh, things worthy of note, this big solder splash here, see how it's almost touched another pad? That is unfortunately a battery connector. That's not good. And I've also uh, tr I've trimmed the excess solder off these and there just because these uh, it's a bit shady. Also notice the USB connector and you really want that to be nice and firmly attached because it is just the little tiny pads at the back. Um, there's hardly any solder in that at all so I'm going to reinforce that as well. 
Um, the connections it's using at the back, it's got the five pins. The middle pin's the only one that's not connected. The two on either side are being used partly to indicate to any device that's connected what type of device this is. And also uh, to probably for strength and to get a larger connection area. Hmm, interesting. Things worthy of note. MOSFET. MOSFET. This MOSFET was dead. This MOSFET had failed uh, in a manner that it wasn't switching the LEDs. And to test this initially when I saw it was the one that switches the LEDs, I jumpered over the resistor and they glowed. And I reckon the fault with this was that the film had fa failed on the gate because the gate MOSFETs have a the gate connection and then a sort of insulating layer and then the sort of other semiconductor junction underneath and it's very easy to damage the film in them but the other thing is this gets very hot and by very hot i mean that when you run the light at full it's this mosfet is actually running its linear region if you turn a mosfet full on it goes to very low resistance if you turn it full off it goes to very high resistance if you set it somewhere in the middle it you can vary the resistance like a potentiometer, but a solid state one. And that's how they're using this. And it gets up to 116 degrees Celsius. It's say about 10 degrees Celsius in here at the moment. So ultimately it goes well over 100 degrees Celsius above ambient uh, if you've got the lamp anywhere near full. And I'm guessing that they've realized this is a bit of an issue, particularly if it's charging. Because if you plug it into the charger while it's uh, being used, it automatically cuts the intensity down over the full range using this MOSFET here and this resistor here and this resistor here. It's all very clever. I shall doodle the schematic out for you. If you want to just take a note of what's in this thing, then by all means sort of freeze frame now and just uh, you can reverse engineer this yourself if you wish. But I've got a notepad here and I'm going to do it for you. So let's uh, bring the notepad down here. Let's move that up, but leave this in shot because it's quite useful to have it there. So let's start with the um, USB in. I've already doodled this out in little scribblings, but I've not done it neatly yet. So I'll just uh, doodle it out right now. So it starts with the USB coming in. So there's the plus, there's the minus. The minus goes to a common negative rail for all the circuitry. The plus goes through a diode and then it goes through two parallel resistors. The two parallel resistors are, well, there's the diode, SS24. There's the two parallel resistors, one ohm each, so that's two times one ohm. One ohm equals, because they're in parallel, 0.5 ohm. That's got two functions, these resistors. It is actually shown the data sheet for the TP4056 uh, charge regulator circuit. I'm guessing that Initially, it will limit the current when you power this up because until the charge sensing is stabilised, it could cause quite a current spike. But it also means that when it's charging, these will themselves drop a little bit of the voltage and dissipate some of the heat versus what's being dissipated by the chip and it lets the chip operate more efficiently. So the output of that comes to the 4056. TP4056, TP4056 here. This is a very common chip. You get lots of little uh, USB powered chargers for cells for projects and they're all based around this. It's, it's very simple and con. There's also a, a resistor here, 100 ohm, which is this 100 ohm, 101, which means 10 one and 10, one so that's 100 ohm. Uh, let's put it there. And it feeds down to two LEDs. Two LEDs. I've missed something in here that I, that's a bit naughty, but not to worry. Um, I can doodle it afterwards. Uh, the two LEDs are to indicate the charging status. One is charging and one is charged. But they just use a common resistor. In this instance, because it's a full 8-pin package, it's got one lead per LED. That also has a connection down to the zero-volt rail. And, uh, yeah, I'll just have to dot past here because I've already screwed up. There's a capacitor just before that chip going between this rail, the positive input rail and the zero volt rail. And there's also a capacitor on the output of the chip and then the lithium cell. Let's um, draw this line like that. Okay, so here's the lithium cell. Li for lithium. 
Now, have I got everything there? I think I have. So that's the capacitor and in input. That's the capacitor on the output. Um, and what I could have done on here, I could have drawn which pads are connected. That would have been quite handy, but not to worry. Um, let's draw the next bit of the circuitry, which is instead of drawing all the LEDs at once, I'm going to draw just one LED and one resistor because there's actually a group of four resistors here, one ohm resistors, in series with all the LEDs which are in parallel. And the four one ohm resistors equals quarter of a watt because you, there's four of them, so you divide it by four because they're in parallel. So that circuitry starts with the... They're actually connected, they're, they're common to the negative rail, so the MOSFET, and I'm going to be, I'm going to draw a lazy MOSFET here because uh, MOSFETs are not my strongest point for doodling. I can never remember the set of arrangement. So it's a P-channel MOSFET, so I'm going to draw a very lazy MOSFET. And that then goes to 4 times 1 ohm equals 0 0.25 ohm. Then that goes to the LEDs. I think there's 40 LEDs. 40 times 40 in parallel. Now, when you actually drive a MOSFET, you have what's called a gate voltage. And unlike a traditional transistor where it'd be like 0.6 volts is where a standard silicon transistor would turn on with a, a MOSFET, you actually have to put a fairly high voltage to it, typically up to about 10 volts. Um, I think the maximum for this type of MOSFET, A1SHB, A1SHB, I shall doodle that. Where will I doodle it? I'll doodle it down here. Now I'll doodle it up here where it can be seen. A1SHB, very common. The A1, I think, is the important bit here. If you were to drive that uh, gate at less than the sort of recommended driving voltage, the MOSFET will act like a resistor. It won't turn on fully. You get logic level MOSFETs that are optimised for 5 volts and you get the higher power, higher current MOSFETs that are for higher voltages that uh, are, you know, you'll need a higher voltage to turn them on. So they're using that here because they've formed a potential divider. So they've got a resistor here with a value of about 20k. And then, and this is where it gets a bit complicated because there's quite a few resistors. After that, there is a variable resistor which I will draw actually as a variable resistor, which also has a switch. That's how it turns off. All it does is it kills the drive to that MOSFET. And then there's another resistor that limits um, how high you can turn the, the output. And then there's another resistor which acts as a controllable limit. So what we've got here is effectively a variable potentiometer, but it's got limits between how far it can actually sort of travel because of these external resistors. So this one is 2.2k, if I remember. Uh, that's the 20k there. Uh, the other one is 2.2k, 222, which is 22 two and two zeros, 2.2k. And this other one is interesting, 333, which is 33 and 33, 33 and three zeros, which is 33k. But this one has another N-channel MOSFET across it. So that's a wired like. Uh, this. So that it can basically bridge that out. And it's quite unusual. This one has a connection via this 10k resistor. I'm trying to remember this, I'm trying to remember this. Um, it's quite an odd bit of circuitry. So it's got that 10k resistor, which goes to the charge input. So it's actually going way over to here. So I'll draw this line and I'll just bring it over here and bring it down and then there's a 10k resistor and it goes to that MOSFET. And what that means is because it's a p-channel MOSFET, to turn it on you actually pull it negative and they must be relying on this circuitry when it's not charging to find a path down to the negative rail and that effectively um, turns this on and it shunts this resistor and that limits the intensity that this can 
uh, should I say, that changes intensity. This, uh, oh, I'm really fluffing this bit up, haven't I? The point here is that when you vary this potentiometer, you vary the intensity. But by shunting this resistor out, it means it can pull harder to the negative rail, which means it can go up to a much higher brightness. That's what I wanted to say. But when you plug it into charge, it sends a positive signal from the charging input, the actual charging supply, through this resistor, and it effectively turns this uh, MOSFET off because it's an, a P-channel MOSFET. And that then puts this resistor in circuit and it limits the range of the potentiometer. So th what that manifests itself at it is, let's see if I can actually show you this by plugging a charging lead into this. So I shall uh, turn this on. Is this lead going to be long enough? Oh. I shall turn this on and we'll see if you can actually see the intensity drop when I plug this in. If I can get the plug up the right way, maybe I'll get the plug up the wrong way. Did you see it cut down there? And then when you unplug it, it doesn't recover instantly. There's a delay and then it ramps up. And I'm guessing the reason for that is because of this capacitor here, um, which is um, this one here, because it's char it's going. the supplies come in via this diode, charging up that capacitor, and it's going to effectively hold this in a sort of low intensity mode until it's disconnected. Now, I can only think that maybe the reason they've done that is because when it's charging, if you plugged it in and left it on all the time, it's going to potentially heat that component up even hotter. I'm guessing maybe that's it. Or maybe they're deliberately cutting it down so it can also put some current into the battery as well, so it can actually top the battery up. Uh, the currents I measured were on the Presto, uh, should I say the, uh, what, was it, what is that brand? Give me a second. The Astro pneumatics. Uh, the currents I measured. Oh, hold on. It was no. I'm talking crap. It was this one I measured the current. Put the clamp meter around it. The currents I measured were uh, about roughly zero to five hundred milliamp when it's charging. But if it's not charging, if it's just running off the battery, it will go zero to one amp. So that would make a huge difference to the heat of that uh, component. And it would also leave plenty of the charging current to actually keep topping the battery up. I also noticed a little circuit board under here. I wonder if that's a protection circuit. The potentiometer, as I say, I should really have drawn it in. There is a little switch there built into the potentiometer but there's only two wires going out to the potentiometer uh, these two here so when you actually turn it fully off all it does is it removes the sort of drive to this uh, MOSFET so how I fixed it accidentally I've, I was just probing about around the MOSFET I found out that it wasn't turning on I deliberately referenced it I shunted the uh, gate to the opposite rail just to actually effectively turn it on fully and see if it was working and it suddenly started working I'm wondering if that shunting it because uh, MOSFETs have that super thin insulation layer I wonder if that had been perforated um, by overheating or a static discharge and me applying the full current to it with, with no current limiting actually blew that clear just like some LEDs blow clear if, if they get a high pulse of current if they're sort of semi-shorted out but that fixed it, but not guaranteed for how long it's going to be. But if you get got one of these, and it does have that problem, it is that little A1 MOSFET in there, this, this little one here. Have I covered everything? I'm kind of, I'm intrigued to know, if is that a protected cell? I think we should slit it open and take a look. Let's uh, slice into this. These are very useful lights. Now I can see a circuit board. Does it have circuitry in the back? Yes, it does. It's got the DW01 and it's got the MOSFET. So this battery itself has protection built in. Not so sure I like the components being thrust against the, the body of the battery, but that is quite common, isn't it? So it's actually fairly well made. It's just that weird quirk with that MOSFET. I, I kind of want to open this one now. Should I open this one? Let's open this one as well. This is the other sort of generic clone. The capacity of the cells uh, are around about, typically, about 2.6 amp hour. 
it seems to be in the sort of two ampere sort of range. That's a long screw. I'm saying that because the other one I took apart was all short screws. I think it's a long screw, except for one. I don't know if it was the warranty detection screw. Let's put the cover off this one and see if the circuit board's the same. Uh, I'm tempted to open the Astro Pneumatics one as well and see what the circuitry's like, if it's the same circuit board. If it's a different circuit board because of how time is going on right now, it's quite late. Or should I say, it's quite early in the morning. I may, I don't think I'll take that apart tonight. Oh, that's uh, this. these are recess screws, whereas those ones were the, uh, these are countersunk, whereas the others were. Domed head. Pan head. What do you reckon? Do you think it's going to be the same circuit board? I get the feeling that uh, even if it's a, a different manufacturer, the circuit boards are probably going to be very simple, but you just never know. Interesting, this says HG LED work lamp. 2018, no less. Under revision, so they've changed the circuitry. Are we ready for the big reveal? So I noticed in the last one, to get this apart, you have to also unscrew this because it clamps the two parts together. This incidentally is a tapered nut that goes onto this sort of collet and uh, closes it shut on the ball here, which uh, it locks it very tightly. It's impressive. Okay. This looks like it's more or less, I it's identical. Keep in mind this is reversed. And same, they've not really quite soldered those again, but I don't actually see pins coming through there. Let's take a look at the back of the circuit board. They've got foam pads. I'm guessing maybe they're just pushing that with the foam pads down onto the um, onto the heat sink the, of the LED. Yeah, it's the same circuit. Oh, no, it's not the same circuit because they've got a little DW01 style chip there on the circuit board instead of on the battery pack itself. That's interesting. Can't really spot a number on that, but I think it's the basically the DW01 style chip, but it combines the MOSFET onto the uh, chip itself for sort of low current applications. The other components are more or less, oh, actually, another slight difference. This one is lacking the diodes and those two resistors. How strange. So I'm guessing, different manufacturer? The, this one doesn't also have the name of the manufacturer printed. Right, okay, you know what, I'm going to have to open the Presto. Presto Pneumatics one now and analyse them. Let's take a look in this one and see what it's like. Sorry, pre uh, Presto. It's not Presto. I'm, I'm mixing that up with the uh, hot dog maker, Astro. Oh, tiny screws for these ones. I'll have to keep these separate. You know what? I'll, uh, to keep this where I know it's going to be, I'll take this collet off, this tapered nut in the collet, and uh, I shall use this as a magnetic screw retainer. There we go. And likewise, that one, I'll keep all its screws together like that. Handy. I'll move these out the way at the moment, just so it looks less cluttered. Could it be less cluttered? It's, it's very cluttered. I am intrigued. Let's see if there's any visible difference in this one. Since it seems to be a sort of slightly higher specification unit. I haven't tested the battery in that one, nor have I test. I have tested the capacity of the battery in this one. It was actually this one was about two point two amp hour, but this is an older light, so it might actually uh, they might have evolved a bit battery wise. It takes a standard eighteen six fifty, and to be quite honest, you can open it and change the battery. You could give this an upgrade if you have one of these and you wanted to boost it. Technically speaking, you could also change the resistor on the charge chip and that would increase the charge current. The 
This is where people will inevitably complain that I should be using a cordless driver. Yes, I should for these. But not to worry. It's almost out, just the last couple of screws. I'm intrigued now. I really want to see if this is different. Screw and screw. There we go. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? The suspense. Different. It's got connectors on it. Same type of arrangement here, but that obviously that the bigger LED cob. This battery, marked 2017, 3.6 volt lithium ion battery, Chai Jun Tech Co. Okay. Let's see if there's much of a difference here. It does seem to have the other features. I'm wondering if this is the original and the others are copies, they're clones. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, for this to be cloned so much because it's pretty good. Very useful light. Notable things, this is three LEDs. Oh, I didn't notice that. What's the three LEDs for? Odd. What if I turn it on? Does the, does the LED... No, it's just the... It's also got a much, much bigger transistor, so if it's using the resistive, or is that a voltage regulator? Is this more sophisticated in some way? I don't think it's more sophisticated. It's got more positions for resistors, higher value resistors to set the current. Although it's actually got higher value resistors, this is actually a brighter light. Oh, this is intriguing. Right, give me a second. I'm just going to uh, see if I can find more info on this. Little bit of further investigation, complete investigation, shows huge differences. It's kind of like this is the original and the others are clones because they've economised, and each time they've economised, it's introduced a greater weakness. So this one uh, is using an FP8102, which I'm guessing is ultimately going to be uh, similar to the TP4056. The differences are that the lithium cell protection seems to be based around these two chips. This one's called 33322. I couldn't find that. Nor could I find 26M3G. I'm guessing that is probably a MOSFET being controlled by this, and it's the battery pr protection for, against over-discharge. That also explains this extra LED. One of these is the charge, one of these is the charge, and this one is to probably to indicate when the battery is running low, and I'm pretty sure when I was testing this, that it may actually have started flashing the LED to warn you that the battery was running low. That's very useful, particularly in a professional environment. This MOSFET here, with loads of big heat sinky pads on it, is the one that was heating up the other one. Uh, if I get the FLIR here, I've got the FLIR camera, it's just booting up at the moment. It's notable that this one does not get hot. It's been chosen, it's either been driven... Uh, harder on at the full setting so that it does actually reduce the dissipation or it's just chosen to have a lower on state resistance in that sort of state but uh, the components are all so similar that it really has been copied and it's notable the first one that I took apart the one that was faulty was shall we say the first generation copy that they used a, a modest range of components in the second one I took apart there has just got bits missing that they're just being cheap and they're just cutting things out just because well you can see that they've even got the pads for the diode but it's just not there they're just gradually cutting stuff out to see how far they can go before it stops working so to speak this is also interesting because it's got six positions for the resistors in this case although it's got the higher value resistors 1.2 ohm the led panel was actually brighter much brighter much nicer light from it other things worthy of note, uh, it's got the soda pads here. I wonder if this socket's going to be the usual sort of weakness that USB sockets tend to be, that when you, you're plugging it in, particularly if you've been having a heavy day, that you uh, plug it in with a bit of force. But um, having said that, it does have one, two, three, four anchorage points, although, yeah, they, could they do with a bit more solder? It's not bad, but ultimately, I like to have the solder physically dripping off USB sockets just to lock them in place. The Astro Pneumatic one also has lots of, the, it's got the decoupling capacitor, then it's got the smoothing capacitor and another one. It's kind of designed to, it's better. 
It's just, it's been designed more by the book, which is just as well, really, because uh, it's got a much higher price. I've just looked up the price. It's about 50 bucks, which, uh, as far as garage tools, isn't bad. But the cheaper ones uh, are probably sort of 10 to 20 bucks. So if you want one, if you're a hobbyist, then, you know, this one's going to be fine. But I'd say if you're an actual mechanic and you want sort of a dependable light source, I'd say the Astro Pneumatic one would be my choice here because a bit more expensive, but it kind of shows in their choice of components and the way they're being run. It looks like the original real deal, so to speak. So very neat. Glad I took those bits. Now I shall stick them back together again. Um, and the winner, hold on, let's uh, get this image up here. This is the, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, I shall zoom it up here and then just zoom down that, focus on that. That's the temperature the transistor got up into that one, 45.3 ambient temperature, 10 degrees Celsius, so 35 degrees Celsius above ambient. In fact, it was hard getting a picture of the transistor because it was focusing on the resistors, which were the real source of heat, which it wasn't, they weren't even being pushed hard. It's running well within its uh, within its operational parameters. It's not being stressed in any way. So I'd expect this to last quite a long time. Also, it looks as though it wouldn't be too hard, like with them all, to be honest, to change the battery. But it's going to be so much easier if you can just get a battery that's already got a connector on, or it's going to let you do it outside the unit and then put a new one in after on, uh, once you've got the connector on it. Yeah, interesting. Certainly to work by oh, and it's got a uh, goop on these to protect the leads from coming off. Do the other ones have that? No, they're just soldered straight on, so they could snap off at that point. This has that little extra protection. All those little features that add up and make this one the better one. So yeah, very neat. Good to take those bits. Uh, interesting to see the way the MOSFET's being used. That may actually be for simplicity and also to avoid strobing with the pulse of a modulation that could make engine components look stationary. That's kind of important, really. Um, but very good. Uh, certainly, I've seen Eric O using his a lot in almost every single video, and it packs out a good punch of light. And having tried this one, this one does put out a lot of very good light. So, very neat. I like these.